Hello everyone, welcome to another live match with the Average Angler. Today we are doing round two of the Cost Cutter Challenge. So we're back at Acorn, it's a Tuesday Cost Cutter, um, and we've drawn peg 18, which is definitely not a good draw. Now I've said this before and managed to get results, but I really do feel like today we're up against it. But we can work at trying to get in a silver's frame, we can work at just trying to get a mixed bag. You can catch short here, big first late, you know, who knows. It's, it wouldn't be a miracle if... I pulled it off because other people have, you know, framed from this peg. So let's just see what we can do. Um, that's all part of match fishing. You can't draw a flyer every week. Although some people would say I can, but that's not true. Catch you in a bit, guys. Right, guys, we're on a bit of a voiceover again today because um, I had issues with my microphone. The wind was a problem as well. So you can see me here playing a fish. We're only about 10 minutes, 15 minutes into the match. And I've upped this fish um, right in front of me, literally fishing with a top kit. Um, in between the gap between my keep nets the this is a corn on the hook just dropped in a few grains of corn and just fished a single grain of corn over the top just looking for a bonus fish which is what i've hooked i've hooked uh, here the rig was actually um designed for fishing over it was the same rig that i'm using to fish over in the three foot of water on the far bank it just so happened that just on my top kit there there was a nice little flattish spot of the same depth so i thought well i'll just use that rig because it's easy obviously it's a little bit under manned undergunned with uh, the elastic and whatever but we're going to play the fish out anyway um, and this was the only fish that I caught short um, at the start I just um, I did give it a bit of longer after I looked this fish but uh, I didn't get any more but it was a very surprising start nobody else started short Eddie on the peg to my left had hooked a long a fish long he looked to cut a nice carp dobbing up against the um, up against the boards and it was after about 10 or 15 minutes of trying short, I did actually have a lot long as well up against the board, thinking if I could nick one short and one long, that would be a great start. But I didn't actually get any bites long. Um, and after the match, I spoke to Eddie, and he'd only had that one, that one long as well. So looks like I got lucky with my one short, and Eddie got lucky with his one long. So at this point, what I've done just before I up this fish, just before I started fishing that short line, cooked in a good palm full of maggots, six foot of water uh, straight out in front of me which is at the bottom of the far slope and then I've also gone up the far slope found three foot which is this, which is what I'm planning to fish in with this rig that I'm on now like I mentioned a second ago and I'm going to fit, uh, found a nice little flat spot on this peg at three foot and um, I put the same amount of maggots in there and I haven't really fed anything else this is a nice fish I clicked about eight I think I clicked for this fish but he's not eight he's only about six and a half maybe seven at the most but it was a good start, got me off to a good start. As I said, I did go over tight to the boards for a bit with a corn, but it couldn't catch much. And then eventually I dropped into three foot of water. I caught that lovely perch just over that sort of initial um, palm full of maggots that I put in. At this point, I wasn't feeding too aggressively through the catapult because I weren't sure what, how the day was going to unfold. And I just wanted to make sure I weren't going to do anything stupid and ruin my peg. So uh, we're about an hour and a half in at this point, I'm video in here. Uh, and this is in the three foot water and I've hooked myself a cart here now the problem was that going across on that on that three foot line with the wind you can see it's picked up a little bit it's moving the float through there's a real strong toe right to left and the wind was right to left as well and it was really difficult to hold the three foot rig still and this carp's foul up to, uh, you'll, you'll see him come off in a moment um, and this was the problem with that line now I've gone over on that line and had that nice perch and also had a couple of nice skimmers off that line it was really really difficult to catch so i dropped down into the six foot line and i managed just one skimmer off that line so now like i'm sort of tried four lines and i've hardly catching any fish of any of them anyway i hooked gone back up to the three foot line and i put a little bit more bait in started like cap one a little bit of bait and i caught that hook that cart but i realized then that you know this three foot line's going to be an issue because i can't keep a rig still so if there are any fish in the swim going to foul up then I'm not going to give a presentation that I want so I was already starting to think I'm going to have to come and try and make the six foot the deeper sort of more stable rig work better the rig on the six foot line which was a little bit shorter another pole section back a slightly heavier rig and also the toe wasn't as strong and it all just seemed to um seemed to be pointing to that was the thing to do here you just see me just dropping in a few grains of corn just throw on that single on that top kit line there I did try that on occasionally throughout the day but the results were no bites. We're now three hours into the match 
it's been tough and I've, I've had to focus on that six foot line like I said what I found is if I start pinging some bait with the catapult I've just about started to get some bites now um, it took me a long long time to figure out what was going on but what really important was a the pinging brought some fish into the swim um, those around me weren't catching as well that weren't you know catapulting maggots but what I found was I had to let the rig run down the swim to my left almost a meter and a half away from where the bait was going in because the tow was so strong that that's where the maggots were settling and I was starting to catch then um, a good stamp of um, roach and with occasional skimmers mixed in I found if I could slow it down in the right spots the flow I would get the skimmers I never really caught any carp over um, in on that line it was just a uh, roach and skimmers and they came and went and I um I just stuck at it because it was a really really hard day and at this point I've already sort of resigned myself to the fact that I'm fishing for the silvers pool now I can see to my right two pegs down Dave Ride is having a good day on the silvers uh, and so I'm I know I'm up against it but I can't see anybody else catching a lot of silvers from where I am so maybe I can get second because I do pay first and second on this uh, venue so I just kept at it for a while then throughout the day, the six foot line in the end was the only line that I could really get any sort of runs of fish on. Sadly, I didn't really catch many of those runs or any of those runs on camera. And every time I turned the cameras on after having two or three fish, that seemed to be the end of my little run of fish. Um, I had a sec, I had a, uh, a line set up to my right with the number six section in hand into a lot, another spot with three foot of water. And I did keep tapping maggots in there for a um, part I couldn't feed it with the catapult because it was too windy and I only really had a couple of skimmers off that line it didn't really produce a lot and I also tried the short line with a top kit quite a few times just to see if I could nick an odd bonus fish um, in the end I feel like they were probably just a waste in time and I should have just sat it out on the longer six foot line because that seemed to be the only place where I could catch with, with any sort of consistency and really obviously I, I, I realised I was only fishing for the silvers pool so I should have just focused on that because it was things were a lot closer than I assumed they were. I thought I was a long way behind, but actually I was a lot closer than I thought I was. Right, guys, end of the match. So let me run you through what's happened, because I'm not sure what footage I've got, because every time I turn the cameras on, I seem to stop catching. So I caught one short on the, I've caught one short early. That's the carp that you saw. I'm pretty sure you saw that. And then I've struggled to catch anything after that. Uh, for a while so then I've ended up going onto my maggot line in the sort of three foot of water line and I've had a big uh, not a big skimmer a big perch and a skimmer and then that's gone a bit hard so I've dropped down into the deep water and had a skimmer down there and it's just not been just not been happening I've not been able to get back on that three foot and present in a way that I was happy with the float was moving too quickly it's sort of like <laughs> but in the deeper water at sort of 11 meters at the bottom of the slope on that peg it's about 11 meters out to the bottom of the slope of that pig it's quite close which is nice um, and i've been able to ping even in that wind i've been able to ping maggots quite accurately and that's what i found has worked for me and in the end i've started to catch and the secret or the, the moment that it really started to catch was when i let the rig run so um instead of me trying to hold it over the feed which is what i was trying to do i thought let's let it run and see whether or not that feed settled a little bit further down the swim and it had it was um it settled about a meter away and then once i started doing that I started catching you know a lot of roach i had some skimmers uh, mixed in uh, and uh, right at the end the very last fish that i caught at the end was a little tench i will put a picture of the silvers net up next to me so anyway what does that mean we've got the cost cutter challenge today we drew peg 18 disaster draw really not the best uh, we said we might have to fish for silvers and we did and we've managed to luckily default second in silvers so we've picked up 20 quid Let's see if i've got the uh, envelope here for evidence We've picked up 20 quid, second in the silvers. So we're five quid up on the day, 15 quid to enter. 20 quid winnings, five quid up. So now the uh, £100 cost cutter challenge is now at £135. So at the moment, it's going up and up and up, which is great because I'm sure there's a run coming for me of um, losses. And I'm going to go to some different venues. not all going to be Acorn. But at the moment, I'm kind of doing Acorn a lot because it's just convenient for me and I've got a lot of other stuff on. But over the next few matches, I mean, I think the next match is going to be Acorn again after this one for the cost cutter challenge. But then I'm going to start trying to uh, incorporate some other uh, venues, which I'm not so uh, familiar with. And so my chances of picking up money are even more reduced. OK, guys, thanks for watching. See you soon.